it's going to be windy. Uh, You're going to have a bad time. It's going to be a bad day, <laughs> yeah. right? So obviously there's, you know, look, there's room for all kinds, but the handhelds do have no, uh, they do for a, sure. a certain reason for them. Um, is there a season for off-roading or is it year round? No, we go it's, off in the snow, we it, go off in the it desert. It depends on who you are. In... Some people might say there's a season. Uh, all year long is the season for us because, yeah, we'll, it doesn't matter, rain, sleet, snow, mud, we're, we're yeah. out in the I mean, I used to do rescue and recovery up in Colorado, so yeah. I did that because I, so I used to be a firefighter in the Air Force. I did aircraft rescue. and Thank you for and, service. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, and, and I did confined space rescue. So I was used to doing that. When we moved to Colorado, I found out, oh, there's a whole team of people who just volunteer where if somebody gets stuck in the mountains or gets stuck, like they go with a family and it's nice and all of a sudden a snowstorm hits and they're stuck. We go up there and it was a, it was a, it's a free service. Like it's just Colorado Rescue Recovery and we go out there and do that. And so having, having people who think they're just going to go off with their family to go camping or something, it's important to even have this stuff for that. Yeah. Not only rations and food and water, but you got to have a light source. You got to have a light source. And you got to have a light source separate from your vehicle because if your vehicle you sometimes dies, have to abandon again, your vehicle. Yeah. So. Right. And, and it's funny. People, people who live in uh, urban environments think this is a flashlight. And it's yeah, like, you, I mean, um, you turn that on in the middle of nowhere. You can't, you, yeah. you can't You're going to see five feet. Yeah. yeah. You know? Nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. Uh, and I live in, I, I, I live country. Uh, and so I'm on a gravel dirt road in, yeah. in the middle of nowhere in a very unpopulated part of Washington state. And when the lights go out, they're not coming back where I am yeah. until well after they, they've connected everybody else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Because right. there's like on the grid where I am, there might be 20 households. Yeah. You're low on the priority Way list. Way low on the yeah. priority list. Uh, and so people don't think about it, but man, if the lights go out and we're looking at back East and in the Northwest, uh, this year, a serious shortage of fuel oil and yeah. natural gas. And they're yeah. talking about, you know, in California, <clears throat> you get rolling blackouts in the summer sometimes mm -hmm. because everybody's blasting their air conditioning and the grid can't handle it. So they have to shut it down yeah. in select places. And all of a sudden your lights are out, right? Yeah. Now, this winter, they're talking about that potentially happening in the Northeast and the Midwest when it's cold. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that it's not fun. Bad when it's hot, but it's, I would think it's worse even when it's worse cold. when it's cold. How did you get connected here with the Maris Adventure Park and the Palo Duro Canyon here? So, I think Dirk was actually following our YouTube channel and he came to one of our um, E3 conventions. Two years and ago. Dirk is the owner. Dirk is the Dirk owner. Owns, yeah. Dirk, Dirk is the Park. owner. Him and his. And family. by the way, it's like yeah. fifty five hundred acres. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So the Paul you haven't been down there yet, right? I haven't been down to the canyon. Oh, oh wait, we're till, going later today. Wait till we wait drop. Till we wait till we drop off the cliff to go. He says it sounds more ominous than it is, but it is. It. What's cool about this place <laughs> is, like, you're you're near Amarillo. There's nothing as far as the eye can see. It's all flat. And then suddenly, within the last like hundred feet, the Earth just falls away from you. It's the second largest canyon in the in, United States, in the North America, and in all of North America. We didn't know it existed. I, and I lived in Texas almost my whole life, and like we didn't know that this place existed <laughs> until Dirk reached out to us. And him and his family are absolutely incredible, and they invited us to come check it out. And blown away. Yeah, it's absolutely. Once you get down in there, you're gonna mind blown. And what's I do enjoy what he's doing here, where it's off-roading it's hiking it's biking there's some caves and some um, some caverns there's no dirt bikes there's no side by sides there's no high speed stuff here and this is you gotta think like this isn't this is nature but this is somebody's property and so i kind of enjoy the fact that you don't have to worry about like a dirt bike come ripping around a hill and because that's happened we've, we've had that happen before where somebody in our group head-on collision with a dirt bike because you're out in the middle of uh, of nowhere and now you're dealing with this thing but um it's this thing is absolute paradise. This list, I cannot believe he could even own this. Like when yeah, I saw this, it's kind of crazy when I you was, think about it. Uh, you own that? Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. you, you own that canyon? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. pretty we, wild. We first saw it, and I was like, how do I own a piece of this yeah. canyon? I want to. And it's a really. Cool